Hey guys, what's up? Aru. As far as theories go, this is probably the most cracked one I've made about Genshin's alchemy. Now if you follow my recent post, this was supposed to be a fun correlation with the Crimson Moon Eye from Perrin Harry, with the Eye of God and Truth from Full Metal Alchemist. But the more I look into the concept of alchemy, rather hermeticism, the more similarities and connections I realized it had with the alchemy of Genshin and the specific abyss-related form that is Chemia. We'll also go over the seven elements, the primordial one and the four shades, as well as the alchemical compounds of alchemy that allows for the creation of humans and their connection with the gods. This theory will also continue toward the possibility of the true creation of humanity and its duality following the concept of as above so below, the microcosm and macrocosm, all is one, one is all, and many more hermetic and alchemical principles. Following the Paracelsian theory that the souls of the world will fuse together and recreating the primordial one. Now I'm no student of alchemy and neither am I an all-knowing being when it comes to the lore and theory within games, so take this video with a grain of salt and just know that we're all having fun with the concepts of Genshin and its relations with real-life philosophical sciences. So without further ado, let's get started. Now this theory started off with the idea that Conria's Crimson Moon and Black Sun Dynasty was similar to the Eye of God and the gateway to the truth of the world, and that it references Full Metal Alchemist in a cool easter egg sort of way. It was like all of the information in the world was being poured into my brain at once. My head felt like it was about to burst, but for an instant, it all became clear. The truth of everything. Ah! Oh, please! I mean, it still does, but now it delves deeper into the idea of uncovering the secrets of the cosmos or outer space that is considered in Hermeticism to be created in the likeness of God and that it's related to the mortals of the human realm. And the key relations between Genshin Impact's astrology and alchemy to the real sky and origins of everything that's being hidden from us. From the weapon, Crimson Moon Semblance, the book Perrin Harry, as well as all the way to the silver twig and the lines from Scaramouche way back in 1.1, and even the book before the sun and moon and many many more if I could squeeze them in, we can create a theoretical foretelling of the origins of the world's fate. A hermetic perspective of the creation of Tevet that we can uncover through alchemy, specifically a form of real life alchemy, chemia, the creation of life. These concepts within hermetic philosophies align quite terrifyingly well with the origins of Tevet's humanity, at least up until the creation of the Gnosis, which I think then starts to push the belief of the Gnostic Chorus, as well as Gnosticism, toward humanity. But before we get to that point, I want to talk about a concept that is related to alchemy but is easier to connect with humanity the stars, and even the divine. The concept of astrology or the operation of stars within Genshin is closely tied to Hermeticism. One such example is the age-old saying ad abstra abyssosk, which can be similarly called as above, so below. Planets and stars within Hermetic thought hold metaphorical symbols relating to what is known as the All or God that influences the world with the One, that is humanity and the mortal plane. The planets are also tied to the alchemical concepts of the classical materials and its philosophies, and becoming one with the all and all with the one can be achieved once we know the influences of these celestial bodies, how to deal with them and what we can do with them, which is being studied in Genshin today. Astrologists like the Sage in the Inverted Sky, the Heretic Crimson Dynasty Astrologers, and even in the current day with Mona Majestus or the Ratwahis Darshans and the Grand Sage of Sumeru. But a particular astrologer that I would point you towards is Astromancer Barbilotris Majestus. Barbalo is the first Gnostic emanation of forethought, hinting at the first concept of astrology and foretelling of the future in Genshin. Trismegistus is related to Hermes Trismegistus, a purported author of the philosophical system known as Hermeticism and its ties to alchemy. Hermes Trismegistus is a conflation of two separate gods, Hermes and Thoth. Thoth is a god of magic and wisdom that tells time without the sun's help, as well as wearing an oddly eye-looking crescent moon and lunar disk. As for the Greek god Hermes, his relation to alchemy and astrology is that he is a representative for the planet Mercury, part of the previously mentioned classical planets and minerals. Hermes Trismegistus is also known as the teacher of secret wisdoms, which also include astrological wisdoms. And a symbolic item for his achievements is the Cadicus. A Cadicus became the basis for the planetary material, Mercury, which represents the mind. Hence its relations with Hermes, alchemy, astrology, and 
astronomy, a key material in what's called the tria prima, the three primes, and often referred to the mind, body, and soul. The three primes within alchemy symbolize the three compounds that make up everything within the universe, and were the product of the four classical elements found in all parts of nature. Bear in mind that alchemy isn't a feasible form of science and that its subjective philosophies are largely formed through patterns and consensus that you can find after long, arduous study. In Genshin, we can call this the seven classical authorities, and the product of that is the three primes of alchemy. In a sense, you could relate this to the three realms of Tevat, salt or soil, mercury which I think is chalk, and sulfur representing human souls, which is the inner light or the light of nature. To human understanding, every being in Tevat that is able to use the elements has what's called an inner eye, and that every being is capable of becoming Shen or illuminated in some way, meaning every living thing in the world of Tevat has an inner eye, an inner light, a light of nature. In alchemical study, this is called the astrum, the iliaster, and more importantly, the Phileas Philosophorum, or the philosopher's son, all of which tie perfectly with why humans with visions have the power to become gods. But humans serve a higher purpose with their illumination or visions. As for what that purpose is, I'll explain later once we go deeper into alchemy. But did you know that the numbers 3, 4, and 7 that we see a lot in Genshin's lore is often mentioned in Hermetic and Gnostic concepts as well, both of which have their own separate paths of lore within Genshin. But this is just surface-level relations of Genshin's alchemy with real alchemy. Me. As I have mentioned, astrology and alchemy are interconnected philosophies. These are known as wisdoms, with a third called theurgy, an art or science of divine works, a divine magic that creates an alliance with the divines or gods, contrasting with the goisha or black magic, which forms alliances with demons, a term often connected with the names of the archons and different demons within the Ars Goetia. Now these three parts are called the wisdoms of the universe that can also be found in the ancient text Tabula Smaragdina or the Emerald Tablet which was written by none other than Hermes Trismegistus. Many theories already suggest that the Emerald Tablet is found in the Abyss, particularly the domains in the Abyss, this thing right here, and that it's connected to the Tree of Life. But we'll go over that later. Now, if Barbelo is indeed a reflection of her mistress Magistus, then her knowledge of not only the stars but also of the gods of each realm as well as alchemical knowledge would then level or even be a tier above a certain great sinner alchemist whose alchemical knowledge knows no bounds. Rhine Daughter, codenamed Gold, which is another alchemical and astrological material. I'm sure that anybody who has a general grasp of Genshin's lore knows about the story of Albedo's creation, his master Rhine Daughter, and their relations to the Magnum Opus. But there are some interesting philosophies that Rhine Daughter talks about with alchemy's concepts with the primordial man in Hermetic texts. There is a distinction between the Magnum Opus of actual alchemy and from the game. The apex achievement of Genshin's alchemy is the creation of human life, while in real alchemy, it is to create the Philosopher's Stone which is the gateway to immortality and divine illumination. You might notice that alchemy doesn't stop at the Philosopher's Stone, and neither does Rhine Daughter after creating her apex achievement or magnum opus albedo, and certainly didn't stop after finding the Heart of Naberius, of which if translated to Chinese is called the Heart of God. And that's because the Philosopher's Stone has other properties apart from immortality. Now the creation of a clone or homunculus is one such example. A relation with Full Metal Alchemist akin to Hohenheim and the Father, Homunculus, or the Dwarf in the Flask. Hopefully you already know about and have watched it because they have some really cool similarities and if not, then you should really watch it because this is why I'm nerding out. Hohenheim is actually a shorter name for Philippus Aurelius Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim. Within the Full Metal Alchemist series, the first homunculus was also the result of Hohenheim's blood, which then later took a physical form after obtaining the Philosopher's Stone. In Genshin's case, the primordial albedo, or albado as a lot of people would call it, his physical form was through the blood of their sibling, Durin. When Hohenheim first met the dwarf in the flask, their dialogues are also quite similar to the Paracelsian musings of albedo during Patch 2.3's event quest, basically questioning God control, its similarities to humans wanting to control, as well as the ability of both human and gods to create, being called an arrogant act, is no different from each other. 
Now even without comparing Full Metal Alchemist, it still applies to the Hermetic Principle of as above, so below. Now from this, we can make inferences that Rhine Daughter could be Paracelsus, while Albedo is the Dwarf in the Flask, or that Albedo is Paracelsus, while Rhine Daughter is Hermes Trismegistus. Regardless of who is who, I won't really compare, both of their personalities align quite well with the concept of Hermeticism and Alchemy, in that humanity's ability is synonymous with the universe that is God. All is one, one is all. Another cool similarity is of Albedo in the Hexen Circle being in a flask just like the dwarf in a flask. Moving on, the term homunculus actually was first used in name in one of Paracelsus' studies. Now, recall what I said about the Tria Prima, or the Three Primes, as this is where we'll see it come to play and where things take a pretty steep dive, so you might want to pay attention. See, the creation of homunculi is done with some pretty interesting ingredients, I must say. Human sperm mixed with horse dung, of which helps the homunculus come to life but becomes transparent and then fed with the arcanum of human blood. The primordial albedo was nurtured within the bowels of Durin, where dung can be created and fed on the blood of a dragon, which we can assume created a flawed homunculus. Albedo, on the other hand, if followed the proper steps, should have been fed human blood, the blood of Rhine Daughter, and is slowly formed through Genshin's term called glass blowing. When can the magnum opus, there can be 2, 3, 4, 7, 14, and even more processes to create the Philosopher's Stone, all of which start from what's known as the chaotic base material, prima materia, and the end product becoming either gold or silver, which is the mind or soul in the tria prima. I say air quotes or because the Philosopher's Stone can come in either the white stone, which is silver slash mind, or a reddish orange stone, which is gold slash soul, all of which starts from the base material, which is lead, and in the tria prima is called the body. Silver is also an incomplete form or less mutated form of the true Philosopher's Stone. Now I would think Albedo is created as a silver Philosopher's Stone, aware of his own mind, ability, and origins, but is also aware of the disaster that he may bring if he furthers his alchemical process, of which he would then possess his own gold or soul or heart moving toward Rubido, which is why Albedo has a hard time processing his emotions. Recall also that the Raiden Shogun and the Wanderer don't have any tangible emotions, and also don't have a true heart or soul of their own. These puppets or homunculi only possess bodies and minds, but no real soul. That's because the soul slash gold slash sulfur and the tria prima and the prima materia of the magnum opus can only be bestowed by the sun or the gods. If we relate the magnum opus to astrology, this can be akin to the planet Saturn, which is synonymous with the base material or prima materia that is lead. And lead is a naturally occurring mineral found in vast amounts in salt and in any form of soil, which is how the first alchemists of Canria are able to create alpha salts or the rift hounds, and is how chemia was found through the creation of life using soil in an otherwise lifeless realm. And an entire era of contaminated soils becoming rift hounds can be found in the Crimson Moon Dynasty. But lead, once refined, can also be found in chalk or albedo, which is the apex of alchemy and learning, the creation of human life. Now both the Rhine Daughter and Albedo say that the universe is the dark essence of the true starry sky and that the earth is the accumulated memories of time and lives. The chalk that is you, the earth is where alchemy gets its name and is the basis of all life. And this, this is new birth. When the pinnacle of attainment in alchemy is combined with unimaginably vast learning, the apex achievement is the creation of life. Chalk is spotless soil and was used to make primordial man. Putting all that together, if the earth is where alchemy gets its name and is the basis of all life, the seven elements and then creating humans, then the derivation of the earth from soil would create chalk. And with chalk, we would then create human life. With soil being the body, 
the prima materia to create form, and shock being mind, the derivation to create primordial man or the first humans. In a sense, humanity or the one can be created through the ancient art of alchemy, which derives its creations from the laws of the universe or the all, which means God, and everything found in the world itself, which is the seven elements that are natural to this world, the seven classical elements. For Paracelsus, the result of this creation is called the Quintia Essentia, or the fifth element, which to his studies is the perfect union with the creation of the philosopher's sun and the philosopher's stone. They're both the same thing. So in all life is the inner light that created the philosopher's stone, and from the essence of God is the philosopher's sun, the philosopher's stone, and at the same time, the fifth element. All is one, one is all. As above, so below. Homunculi and humans are one in the same in the world of Genshin. But the homunculi lack what's known as a soul or heart that gives them a purpose to become truly human. This would make more sense when you realize that every homunculus lacked or is devoid of emotion and actual humans in Genshin were created by the primordial one and the four shades, the god. The All, the Universe. Hello there. Now the book Before the Sun and Moon states that the Primordial One created humanity after defeating the seven Dragon Lords, separating the microcosm of the universe from our world, microcosm and macrocosm, and then created their own life forms first before finally creating humanity. If humanity and all other life was created in the likeness of God from the universe, one with the All, then the primordial one created their own life and their own humans from their likeness too, all with the one. When you think about how Rhindaughter created Albedo using the principles of Paracelsus, the primordial one could have used their blood on the soil of the world creating their own life but this time with a soul. If following the steps of creating the homunculi, maybe even from the decomposing corpse or from the bowels or dung of one of the seven dragon lords. Remember also that life, death, and rebirth is part of Natland, which is coming in 5.0 and we've already seen the trailer and teaser for Natland. The concept of 40 days and nights to create a homunculi also line up with the book's 40 years and 400 years of holding the branches in before the sun and moon when creating all the life in Tevat. Specifically speaking, the Erminsel branches grow differently from other fauna found all over Tevat, which is related to the seven elements. If anything, they grow downwards. Now going back to the tree of Prima, we can also call these branches chalk or the mind, a spotless soil which was derived from the base material, soil, or lead. But what about the third aspect of creating life, the soul? Well, we know that the primordial one and the four shades is the creator of humanity, but that process of creation as well as the events that happened after is quite related to the hermetic primordial man, Adam Cadmon, and the creation of the Sephiroth, or the tree of life. Now, there's a lot of other details that I could not add into this video, but I'm pretty sure you get what I'm trying to say. In the concepts of the Tree of Life or Sephiroth in Hermetic texts, specifically Paracelsus' studies, the doctrine of the Jewish Kabbalah named Adam Kadmon is connected to the light of nature, if you can still remember in the first five minutes of the video, and a title synonymous with the light of nature or Phileas Philosophorum, which for humanity is the inner light or inner eye to attain godhood, is also called the primordial man the primordial one. And in the most recent animation, The Road Not Taken, we get a one-to-one, -one, almost mirrored experience that happens to both Lumine and Aether. All is one, one is all, as above, so below. This doesn't even talk about how the Abyss and Celestia are also one and the same if you read the Abyss lore. I, I, I don't know what to even tell you guys anymore. No, actually I still do. Now, back to humanity, the creation of the Tree of Life or Sephiroth was the result of light from the void gathering into 10 vessels. Three vessels could hold this light, while the other seven could not and broke and the entire universe was created in a sphere, in a bubble, in Tevat. 
and all the light of those seven vessels were also spread out into all forms of life within the world. In our case, everything inside of Tevat and its fake sky bubble. The soul, the heart, the sulfur, the gold, the essence that makes humans truly humans is found within this light. And this essence, this light of nature, is what ties humanity with the primordial one, to Adam Kadmon. The primordial one or Phanes is also a name found in the Greek creation myth deities. Both Adam Kadmon and Phanes are also androgynous, separating the microcosm of the universe with the world. Now Adam Kadmon in Jewish Kabbalah is known as the divine light without vessels. And to humans, he is the collective essence of the soul, the inner light, the Phileus Philosophorum, the fifth essence, the philosopher's stone. In every human is that essence. In every human is that philosopher's stone. And in every human is a very small part of Adam Kadmon, of the primordial one. So the primordial one and its essence is identical to humanity. And to return all that light back to the seven vessels is to restore the body of Adam Kadmon. From Genshin's history, the seven dragons, after the creation of humanity and the loss of the usurper's functions, was the creation of the seven vessels that contained a descender's remains. This is likely their plan to restore the primordial one, Adam Kadmon, back to his true body and spirit, the salt and the sulfur the soil and the light. Recall also that the Ermin soul has a third entity that even Nahida couldn't figure out. This is known as the chalk, the mercury, the mind of Adam Kadmon. And what the Traveler is doing is not only finding all the vessels themselves, but is also understanding the concepts of humanity's desire, their inner light of nature, and resonating with them, combining with them, unifying with them. If you sort of understand what I'm trying to say for the past 20 minutes, this is going to be a very terrifying revelation once we put all the gnosis together. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen. And if you've watched the ending of Evangelion movie and the ending of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, an ending that is similar to that and seeing something like this is going to be pretty terrifying. Now this is why the Traveler can combine all of the essence of humans into him or per and create light. The light that created Adam Kadmon, that created the world, that created humanity, the light of everything. And this is also why I think the Fatui is going to lose. Because without the inner light of humanity, the soul, heart, and essence that makes humans the way they are, the remembrances of Adam Kadmon are but a hollow vessel without divine light. And funnily enough, the Saritsa is also a god with no love who wants to burn the old world away. A divine light with no vessels. Maybe the Saritsa is Adam Kadmon, or maybe we are Adam Kadmon. We're also reclaiming all the light of the world and reuniting with the light of nature. Now, imagine what happens if all the souls of humanity come together and reform the primordial broken god that is resting at the innermost chambers of Celestia. Theoretically, of course. A pretty eye-opening but terrifying revelation to the purpose of humanity and purpose of all life in Tevat, isn't it? But I'll talk about that in the next Crack Theory, whenever that may be, that is. For now, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!